Hello guys, welcome to another video. Now today we're we'll talking about the new golden boy, Erling Haaland. Now before we get the video underway, I just want to know in the comments, do you guys think this is a future Ballon d'Or winner? Or do you think someone like Mbappe or even Alfonso Davis are more likely candidates? Now Erling Haaland, he's still a very young player and he's been playing football for quite a while now. He started at Molde in Norway. He played there under Gunnar Solskjaer, who's probably the best Norwegian striker in history. So that could be another thing that he's got to compete for in the future, which when you see what he's doing so far, he's definitely going the right strides towards that. The point I'm trying to make is that he's Man United's coach obviously now at the moment and Man United I think they probably do need a striker I don't think Martial's a striker at heart I think he's a winger but just went through an incredible run of form after lockdown and I'd say this isn't his true player at the same time so he's hate had his worst side of his form and the best side of it and it's paid to bad effects at the moment so I think that's not the answer for their striker I think someone like Hallam would be the question is would he go there now what we got to remember is his agent is Ranola who is the same agent as Pogba now he said none of his clients are going to be doing this for Man United again which is a big problem for them obviously if they were thinking about having him ridiculous demands for his, his agents as well in terms of wages maybe demands and so it's going to be very tricky if they want him and aside of all of that got to remember as well that Roy Keane played for Man United and I don't know if you know this but Alfie Halland who is Erling Halland's dad played for Man City and Leeds which is Man United's two of three biggest rivals that they have that's not the reason though it's that Keane broke Halland's leg while he was playing for Man City and will he hold a grudge against that and will he want to be playing for the same team which Keane did that for I don't know how much of a difference it would really make but you never know it's definitely going to be a big factor and Erling Haaland said that his dad never talks about that challenge he doesn't want it to affect his potential career ahead of him now another subject I want to get into in this video is will he go to any other clubs in the future when Haaland originally moved to Dortmund for the next chapter in his career it didn't seem like it was going to be the last chapter in terms of his clubs he was going to go to it didn't really seem at the time like it was going to be where he finished his career no disrespect to Dortmund they're an incredible team obviously but the way it came about so quickly the speculation it seemed as if it wasn't really a big deal and I guess Dortmund knew what they were getting into especially like I mentioned with Haaland's agent he has very sort of harsh demands so I'm sure one of them was that he'd have to move on at some point granted why he's got a 60 million release clause which is very affordable for a lot of teams now the team which strikes my mind is Real Madrid I think this is the team which pretty much ticks all the boxes for both parties here you look at Real Madrid, they've got an incredible strike in Benzema, but it's getting over 30 now. It's only probably got a few more years left in him before he sort of goes on a decline. So it seems perfect for Haaland to step in and take his place. And for a 60 million release call, there's definitely something that Real Madrid can afford. Another team that you could go for, which is rumoured, is Barcelona. Now, I don't know if this one's more likely or not. You could argue for some reasons it could be because... With Messi on the way out by the looks of it, someone like Hallen could be there to replace him as their new superstar. But there's a lot of financial trouble there at the club and maybe they need to balance the books and maybe a transfer like that. Maybe not so much the transfer in fairness, but the wages is something they want to try and avoid. Because like I mentioned, with the wages that the agent's going to want, it's definitely going to be over 200000 a week, which is probably not ideal for Barcelona. Of course, if he does well, it doesn't really matter what he's being paid, but I think it's still probably too much of a risk considering the financial troubles they see themselves in as a club. Now, another thing is, I do wonder how he will do at another club, because when you look at the way Dortmund play, especially under their manager, who's actually just left, is that they play very attacking football, very creative football as well, and everything goes to the striker. If you look at Paco Alcacer, he was a completely declined player, but he was a sub at Barcelona. He was actually a meme at the time and just quite a bad player, but that's what football is. It doesn't tell the full story, and sometimes you're going through things in life, and sometimes the form and you're just not hitting the net, and then that was it for him at Barcelona, and because he was given the chances and maybe not even the opportunities because he came off the bench for a lot of games to start with but got the goals and I think that's down to the system the creativity for the striker they play with they play one up front so all the strikers go to that one striker and if you see him play every cross seems to go into the middle of the box so if you've got a good head of the ball if you've got a good first touch then you're bound to score goals for that team and Talon's obviously got both those things and that's why he's doing that I'm not saying he's a bad player, but I'm saying it plays to his strengths. I'm sure there's a lot of research done by him, his dad, and his agent as to why they wanted to choose Dortmund in the first place. So I think when they when there comes harder games and there's games where they can't create as much, that will be an interesting thing because they're one of the big dogs in the German league, of course, Dortmund. So if he was to play for Real Madrid and you know the Champions League knockout stages, the chances would probably dry up in the latter stages when they have to be more cautious. So it'd be interesting to see when he gets less chance if he can be as clinical. And if he 
is clinical, then he's sort of got a Ronaldo feel to him, you know, especially in his latter years at Real Madrid as well, where he'd have very little chances, but he'd score a lot of goals with them. So I think he's sort of got the personality for a Real Madrid player as well. So it'd be very interesting to see what happened from all of this. Of course, like I've said, when there's Man United, there could also be Man City as well. He said in the past how he likes his dad's old clubs who played for Leeds and Man City in England. So could he be playing for one of those teams in the future? He's always said, oh, he's like Leeds, but no respect to Leeds, but I can't really see him playing for them for three reasons one being that Hallam wants Champions League football two and three being the transfer fee and the wages he's going to want lastly moving on to his national team now if we look at Ronaldo he's an amazing player and there was also questions about whether he was going to do anything internationally with Portugal he did that in 2016 with the Euros and I think Hallam could be a similar thing I mean I'm Norwegian as well and we haven't really got a great national team compared to the rest we've got some decent single players in terms of we've got Odegaard who is a very good creative player. We've got Berg, who's playing for my team, Sheffield United, who's, uh, I, I would say, really not doing what he should be doing from what is expected of him, uh, but still, I'm sure, played in the right way and played in the team with a bit more confidence. I'm sure he'd do better, which I think, for Norway, he is. And then, of course, you've got the main man, Hallen. So there's only really three players that sort of stand out compared to the rest from what I've noticed in terms of the superstar. So I think there needs to be a few more players in the team. I mean, I think, you know, when you when you look at a good team, you need a good spine. So I think if they were to do anything in terms of the Euros or even the World Cup, it would have to be a decent keeper playing for them. They'd probably need a good defensive partnership and probably a good working midfielder as well in the team. So it's a lot to ask for, especially when none of it's really being seen at the moment. They have got Forsby plays for Sampdoria as well, who maybe that could be their sort of hard working midfielder. They've got a Jair who is playing for Celtic at the moment. It's not really doing well for them. So if he was to maybe dominate like Van Dijk did for Celtic as well, then maybe he could be the defender they're looking for. In terms of the goalkeeper, they've got Jensen, who the last I remembered was at Heather Berlin. So there's a keeper, but he's not obviously setting the world alight either. So maybe they do need a better keeper. Now, that is obviously a lot to ask for. And then even with all of that, he'd have to take his chances. But if you remember the Euros in 2016, as long with Ronaldo, Bale was also the main man for Wales, who managed to carry them as well. So maybe Hallen could do something similar in the future with Norway. I think it's obviously a big question and it would be interesting to see what the answer would be but I think give it time that the players gel and we'd soon find the answer out of course they had the qualifier against Serbia which did very early on in this channel which did very well and of course they didn't win it so you know that was a big statement for them to see how they could have done maybe going into the Euros but they couldn't answer it and so maybe they need a bit more time to adjust together now this is my video I wouldn't say reacting but sort of going over and analyzing Haaland after winning the Golden Boy now don't get me wrong this guy's got an amazing future ahead of him and granted there's no injuries or bad transfers then I think this guy will probably get a Ballon d'Or and he's got all the attributes to be an amazing footballer so I don't see why anything's going to stop him now if you did enjoy this video please subscribe it means so much to me and until next time take it easy guys